Just kidding. Scott, we've been saying such good things about you. It's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, look at that. He signed off. See, we got, <laughs> we got rid of him. <laughs> What's up? Oh, there he is. Awesome. How are you, Scotty? Great. Great. I shaved the beard, man. I got too many comments from my kids that I looked old. Sorry. Ah, your baby face now. I know. Scott and I went no shave November and then just kept going. So I'm going to start in two minutes. Um, Scott, you want me to introduce myself or you want to do a quickie, quick introduction? I'll introduce you. Sounds great. You want me to awesome. give you a make, minute? Make me sound good. Let's start at 11.33, one minute, okay? Give everybody okay. time, grab water. All right, I'm gonna grab water. water, I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, let me see water. Kristen's eating some chips over there, man. She better have water. There you go, Matt. We got Max, where's the yeah, water? Rami, how you doing? Oh, Matt. Sorry, I saw Max. Man, we so got Max. And Max. Yep. How are you, Matt? I'm good. Thanks for thanks for agreeing to come back a little virtually. virtually yeah, yeah. Style. Well, life has changed since the last time we saw each other. <laughs> yes, I kind of went the old way back. But, I know. Uh, I was trying to remember how long ago that was. Was that 2019? Feels like about seven years ago. It feels like a hundred years ago. Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, I just did one of these, I was telling Taylor, I just did my first in-person presentation since COVID started. And it was the same company I had done one exactly a year ago, right? Like, so literally, and I was like, okay, we have some more to talk about in the past year, right? <laughs> well, you are fantastic. I still, I'm still following some of your advice from uh, way well, back. The only downside is I can't throw protein bars at everybody during that. I throw virtual protein bars at everyone. So see if you catch it. It's uh, it's all right. Taylor threw virtual uh, Uber gift card, Uber Eats gift cards to all of us. Oh, there you go. I like that. For anybody who asks the most questions. So, all right. When Scott comes back, he's going to do a quick intro. I promise to get everybody done um, by five o'clock today. We're doing five hours straight of workouts, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what we paid you for. You're make right. Make sure everybody's listening. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I had a new, I had some newbies that I had never met and I did my normal intro. Like, you know, why isn't everybody in their workout clothes? We're working out for two hours. And these faces went like, they were. And I was like, no, no, this is my weird sense of humor, guys. We're not working out today. So, uh, well, Robbie, you'd be impressed. We had Alyssa's husband, who's a personal trainer was, it was back in the early days of COVID every Wednesdays, we were doing a virtual, uh, workout together about eight 30. Nice. How was it? We had that going. Listen, I don't know how long did we have that going for? We were strong for a couple of months, but then our, our our group started fading out. I think all the parenting and kids and all that started taking off. Yeah, yeah it was off. awesome. I think we had it going for about a month or two, maybe three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. Everybody enjoyed it. Had the kids involved, and it was pretty funny watching the kids do it too. It's it's fun when the dogs get involved too, right? When they start yeah. walking through doing squats and all that. So. All right, I'll let Scott do an intro. And hey, guys, if you can do your uh, video, that'd be great. I'd love to see smiling faces if you're driving or something, I understand. So take it away, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know uh, many, many of y'all saw Rami before when he came into our office. But if you, if you have not met Rami or aren't familiar with him, um, we, we've known each other for years. He has a, a record of my body fat, I think, for the last 10 years. So you can tell <laughs> my whole I'm going to hold that against you. That yeah. <laughs> He knows all my nutrition issues and everything else. So it's, it's, uh, he's helped me a lot over the years to understand how to eat better and when to exercise and what kind of exercise and how to fast and all that kind of stuff, which is really important. Uh, for me, eating is the problem. It's not necessarily working out. It's just what I eat and that kind of stuff. So luckily, he's got all of those skills and all that knowledge, which is awesome. But Rami used to own a gym. Uh, so he ran a really successful gym that did uh, group training and personal training for years. He sold that gym. Um, he's written multiple books about running and faith and finding that place that you need to find to uh, make your life better. So you can check him out when it comes to that stuff too. But uh, Taylor, thanks for arranging all this and for reaching out, um, coordinating it with Rami. Um, you know, Thread is, is paying for this, and I, I really appreciate it, and I think it's a great message for all of us to think about mental and physical health and everything right now. So it's really important that we focus on that and take care of ourselves. So Rami makes me feel better every time I talk to him, and I hope you feel <laughs> the same way. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Great intro. I think I'd just be done after that. I mean, that was just amazing, right? We're all, we're all good. So, hey, guys, before I share my screen, I just want to tell you, like, in general, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Um, 
you know, I, fortunately or unfortunately, I've gotten much better at these virtual presentations, man. I was just, I was struggling in the beginning because I'm such a walker. You guys know me, walk around the room, talk to people, touch a shoulder, can't do, I'm going to try to do that, right? But, um, but I've kind of learned how to impart this. And one of the things I've learned is um, because we don't interact as much, it's a lot of information, right? So I want you to go into this thinking of, this is not a lecture, okay? So use the chat room. I'm good, I can see the chat room. Um, I'm not gonna answer the questions as we go, but if something comes up, just put it in the chat room and I'll put that at the end. I'll open that up. And then since we're only 17 people, I'll also let you guys kind of jump in on audio if you wanna ask questions. But so just to set the stage, my goal is that you walk out of here with one powerful thing. Now, if you get 10, big win, right? But if you have one thing that you change in your life or one goal that you set, then I feel like we've succeeded as a team. So I've got a lot of info. We're gonna dive right into it. Um, if something's super pressing, I think there's a way on Zoom where you can raise, a little hand pops up. Um, I don't know if Ring Central has that. I don't see it on mine, but anyway, if there's a little, if something really, like you wanna get to it before I move on, I, I don't mind if you unmute and just do it the old fashioned way. Just interrupt me. I'm from New York. I'm used to that kind of stuff. Just interrupt the heck out of me all the time. So, all right, I'm going to make sure I can share my screen. And let's see. All right. Can everybody see that? I get a thumbs up. Taylor, just give me a thumbs up. Got okay, it. great. Awesome. Okay. So it's interesting. We were talking beforehand. Um, it's been a little over, I think over a year, Scott, we were trying to figure out maybe 2019 when I came out there. A little bit's changed, would you guys say? Maybe in the last year, right? So I just say like what a year it's been. And so this talk was actually a health talk that I gave for years. And now I've tweaked it to be what I would call more COVID or immunity specific because it's really important for people. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big optimist. Uh, it doesn't belittle in any way how terrible this has been in this past year, but I also try to look for the, the silver lining in things. And one of the silver linings I've found is that people are much more conscious about their health right now. We are learning more and more and more that the healthier people are, the, the less chance they have of having bad outcomes with this virus and just viruses in general, right? So I call uh, 2020 the great revealer. I think it revealed a lot about us, our health, our spirituality, all of that. And so that's where this talk came from. Um, you're gonna have a lot of questions that don't get answered today. So as usual, I like to offer something free right in the beginning in case I totally stink and that way you guys at least feel like you got something, right? So free 30 minute consult call to everybody on this today. Um, we're also recording it so we can send it out to the rest of the team. I have an online calendar, so I'll send this handout to you, Taylor, and then you can just forward it on to everybody afterwards. Um, that's my online calendar. Book two 15-minute uh, sessions back-to-back -back so we're not rushed. Um, and then um, if it doesn't fit in my calendar, there's a lot of slots, but they fill up quick, just text me and I'll, I'll find you another slot. And that can be anything. There's going to be a lot of things that pop up, but that can be anything. So, so interestingly enough, the first thing I used to talk about in health was always diet, right? So we are gonna talk about diet today, but we're gonna talk about it in the beginning from a different angle. And what I wanna talk about a little bit is your diet in terms of not just your food, but all the content you take in. So how powerful <laughs> has content been this year, right? Like, oh my gosh, I mean, I, you know, I'm 150 years old, so I've been watching the news a long time, right? And so literally the way the news has changed and how they deliver it and how often they deliver it and the, I mean, down to the colors that they show, it's been amazing. So one of the things I've learned and I've really helped people with is limiting your diet to things that don't trigger you. And I'll, I'll give you an example. There are people, my wife is one of them, who can have the news playing the whole day she's working, like on her phone, right? have it playing while she's working, she's a realtor, she's talking to people, she's on the computer, it doesn't affect her one bit. That would drive me bananas. So two different personalities, right? For her, it's like background noise. For me, I feel very triggered by it, so I just can't do it. So when I use the word triggered, it's like when I talk about certain foods. Some are gonna affect people and some are not. So know that about yourself and really do it. Most people, <laughs> I'm gonna recommend, here's tip number one, stop watching it at least an hour before you go to bed. Okay, so it's gonna affect your sleep. Somebody's unmuted, uh, somebody's unmuted, so if you can mute, I'm getting a feedback. 
Um, so just try an hour before, okay, going to bed that you stop that. Um, and then what I've really tried to do during this, especially after March, was, um, Taylor, what's your girl eating? She's making me hungry. I don't know. She's chewing on something. What you eating there? She's eating some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. We'll talk about Chick-fil-A later. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, so I try to stick to uplifting and positive influences in the media. And when I find that I'm triggered, I just don't watch them. I just don't go there. And it's so hard not to, right? What I like to say is stick with, if you're looking for information and you're looking for, to learn about things, stick with who you knew BC before COVID. Don't try to pick up new influencers and new doctors and things like that. Stick to people from before COVID, okay? Same with social media. I follow the people that I followed before. I've followed them for years. I trust them. I've vetted them. I'm not going for anybody new during this time because, oh my gosh, everybody's an expert now, right? Like, I feel so bad for my friends that are physicians because they literally are getting inundated with all their friends telling them everything they know about this virus. And they're like, yeah. I only went to, you know, medical school for 14 years. I don't know anything about this stuff. I've been a doctor for 30, you know, could you imagine what they're going through? So that's the number one kind of background I want to talk about, you know, just kind of get to you guys is focus on your diet, not just your food. Okay. Then second kind of goal. And by the way, as you're taking notes, or you don't have to take notes because you're getting this handout, I want you to think in terms of, I'm going to give you a hundred things to work on here. I want you to pick one, and we're actually gonna do an exercise at the end. I'm gonna go till about 12, 15, and then open it up for discussion. We're gonna do an exercise at the end where you're actually gonna pick a goal, and you're gonna write it down, and if you feel like it, you can share it with the group, or you can share it with me during our call, because accountability is the key, right? Okay, so diet is number one. Then moving on, before we even get into exercise and diet, starting your day on the right foot. So this is something, Scott told you I sold my gym. This is something that's really changed for me. Um, my alarm when I owned the gym went off at 3.45. Some days I would sleep till 3.50 if I was feeling a little lazy, right? So for years, I got up before four, and my goal was to get a cup of coffee, wash my face, go to the bathroom, get out the door in like seven minutes, okay? That was because I wanted to push that. The gym opened. I had to be at the gym at like 4.10, so I had to be out the door in there and it was about a 10 minute drive, right? So I had no morning routine except for that. That has completely changed in COVID. Taylor and I were talking about one of the upsides is no commute, right? So you've been free. Of course, all of us are just working more, right? With that no commute. Oh, look, another hour to work. So of these things, a great goal would be to pick one to do every morning. And latest research on habit, guys, you're not gonna like this, it's 66 days of doing something every day before it's an ingrained habit. It's not 21, it's not 14, it's 66. And this is true, true double blind studies that they've done of people that have implemented habits. So pick one of these things and do it for 30 to 60 days and see how you do, okay? So first and foremost, give yourself 30 extra minutes so you're not rushing out the door, okay? So that's a good one. Find a peaceful spot in your house to have calm time when you first start up. Um, jumping all the way to the bottom one. Don't turn your phone on first thing in the morning, okay? So texts and emails are gonna pull you in. Scott, I'm calling you out on that one. Scott and I talk about this one all the time, right? Um, and then here's a really cool thing. I start every day with this. There's a YouTube on it. Um, it's called 478 Breathing. It's just a one minute breathing exercise that you guys can do every morning. You can do it at night. Um, I did one right before this talk to kind of center myself. Uh, like I said, it's one minute. Check out that YouTube video, give it a try. You're gonna love it. And literally, if you do it twice a day, it's two minutes out of your day. We all have that, okay? Um, I do affirmations every morning. So this is something I got from Jack Canfield, the visualization as well. Um, I say what I'm grateful for now, and I also say what I'm grateful for that hasn't happened yet. So I say it in the present tense. So like, you know, let's just say you wanna say, I am grateful for making $800,000 a year at Thread next year. So there you go. Throwing that one out there. Matt's looking at me like, what? <laughs> yeah. Robbie, like, question. You may jump into this, but I've always yeah. felt like the morning, that battle's won the night before. Yeah, 100%. Are you, are you, are you about to, do you have a nighttime routine you'll share? Or are you going to get to that? So, so now I, I'm going to jump in. Thank you, Matt, for saying that. So I don't, I'm not going to go through a whole thing on sleep. That's a talk I just gave yesterday. It was 45 yeah. minutes long. We would be here for five hours, but I'm going to give you one hint. Um, and that is, it's not so much, the night before going to bed, it's having a consistent wake up time. 
So the big win to force yourself to go to bed at the regular time is having a wake up time that's within a one hour window every day. And by every day, this is the hard part, I also mean the weekends. So this is something I found myself and my clients doing. We did great during the week, and on the weekends we would sleep in or catch up on sleep, and that would kill us on Monday. Take us till Wednesday to get it back. So my wake up now, praise God, a little different than 3.45, is between 5.30 and 6.30, okay, every day. So I get to sleep in now for me. Um, and on the weekends, I don't go any later than 7.30, unless it's a special occasion. And that has changed my life. So hopefully that answers your Great. question, Matt. Yeah, yeah that's, and that, that will, it's kind of like when I tell people, work on the protein in your diet. I'm also in my head thinking this is going to help with the carbohydrate, but work on one thing, which is the wake up time. Okay. That's great. Awesome. So um, affirmations I start with, visualizations are great. This is the hardest one for me. I get very distracted. I try to do one minute of just visualizing my life 30 years from now. What does that look like? Uh, my goal is I look better than I do right now, right? That's why I shaved the beard, but no, that's really not my goal. My goal is about my family and where we live and that kind of thing. That one's taken a lot of practice, but man, Jack Canfield tells stories about these affirmations and his, one of his visualizations was getting a million dollar um, royalty check. And then the next slide he shows is their first royalty check and it was $1.1 million for chicken soup for the soul. Super cool stuff, right? Um, it's a pretty successful guy. Uh, if you guys know any numbers, he's the first person to cross 500 million books. So his goal is to sell a billion books before he dies. Um, if, you're, if it's your thing, I do my prayer and devotional. If it's not, you can do meditation. That's fine. And then I started a gratitude journal right at the beginning of COVID. It's super simple, guys. I have it on my phone. By the way, I'm not turning my phone on. I'm just using it for notes. Um, and I do three things I'm grateful for every day. And some days, it's coffee right? Like it could be as simple as possible, or it could be something big. A lot of days I try to put in there something I'm grateful for that's challenging. Because I know, having lived on this earth for 58 years, that almost everything that's been a challenge in my life later on has been something good. There's been something to it that's been great. So three things every day changes your whole day. It just changes your paradigm, right? Like how do you approach this day? I'm grateful for whatever comes. And then repeating again, no phone, and no internet for the first 30 minutes. If any of you do that, I'm gonna be so happy because it's gonna really, really change your life, okay? So note one of those down if it's something you wanna work on, and again, we're gonna hit the goals at the end. Um, this one's number three is simple. Work with people a ton on this in COVID. So much of what the news tells us, we have zero control over. Focus on what you can control. Um, a great YouTube video, I'm gonna put this in here before I send it. Um, it's called Make Your Bed. It's by a Navy SEAL. I'm taking notes as we go as well, right? Um, and I'll just send you the YouTube. And his whole thing is, look, start your day by making your bed. You've got one win under the belt. If everything else falls apart, at least you made your bed. That's how I feel about my first 30 minutes and my morning exercise, okay? So literally my morning exercise, like today, it was really not a lot. I just did some stretching, but I already feel like I've done something today, which is great, okay? Going on to sleep, Matt, what you asked about, here's just kind of the, the, the high hanging, the low hanging fruit, the high hanging fruit, the low hanging fruit, um, shutting off the media. If you do do media at night, if you do TV, get these cool glasses, okay? You can get some on my website, blue light blocking glasses. Know that this screen, our body thinks it's the sun. And the sun is great for us. It keeps us awake all day and it lowers our melatonin rate. When the sun goes down, our melatonin goes up, which is why we get sleepy, okay? When you stare at the screen all night, your body still thinks it's daylight. That's really, that's all the science behind it. And these glasses block that. And there's like, these are like 15 bucks. And by the way, they look freaking cool, don't they? Come on, guys, right? So um, supplements can help. I don't want to dive into that now. That would be, if your sleep is your thing, like you just circled this and this is what I want to work on, let's work on that in your call. I've got a whole handout I can give you. Um, and then I love sleep tracking devices. Almost everybody probably has a Fitbit. You can hold up your hand. Um, I've got the high level one, which is called an aura ring. It's this looks like a wedding ring, right? And it measures, this measures everything. How cool is that, right? And transmits it all to my phone. My phone doesn't need to be near my bed. Um, by the way, guys, the number one excuse I get for not, for taking the phone to their bedroom is what? I need an alarm clock. Guess what? There's these things you can get at Walmart. They're called alarm clocks, right? Um, they've got super cool ones out there that work great. 
So this has helped me a ton because it gives me a rating on my sleep and I can look back and see what I did the day before. Like one of the things that taught me is how late in the day I can have caffeine. Um, I actually thought it was noon and it's actually two or three. So I can push it a little bit. I'm a fast metabolizer of caffeine. Some people it's like 11 in the morning and you can just track your sleep. One of the biggest things it showed me is the thing that affects my sleep the most is alcohol and food late at night. So I can have a drink at five in the afternoon, totally fine, my sleep score is great. If I have a drink late and I eat at like eight o'clock, sleep score is terrible. So good thing to know, right? All right, number five, <laughs> I, 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 I kind of debated doing this, but this is a nutrition talk that takes an hour and I'm gonna do it in five minutes. So again, I'm only gonna hit the high level stuff and what I want this to do, I want everybody to book a call with me, right? So, because if you see something in here, you're like, oh, I wanna work on that, click on my calendar and book the call and we'll dive in deeper, okay? So, what's the high level stuff on nutrition? What's come out lately? What have I seen? I'm working with hundreds of people now, so what have I seen work? Number one is tracking your food. We talked about this in my last talk. Um, my Fitness Pal is the best free app out there. And you can actually link to me. Scott does this. I get to see his Big Macs that he's, I'm just kidding, Scott. Just you're the only person I can call out. So, um, but I get to see his food and we can go over it together, which is great. Okay. Um, we talked about fasting. Not going to go into a deep dive on that, but almost every individual client I have now is doing some form of intermittent fasting. Again, I will walk through that. Also, if that's really, that one usually pops up as number one question. If that's what you want to talk about, throw it in the chat room right now, and I'll save some time at the end to dive in a little deeper on fasting. Okay, so just write fasting in there, and I'll know. Um, and then if you take anything away, a super simple one, and everybody's doing it, is ice cold water. The reason we drink ice water is it, it takes um, calories for your body to heat it up before it absorbs it, and just another way to burn more calories, right? Um, so mine did have ice in it, but it melted. So half your body weight in ounces is your long-term goal for water. It's a lot of water for some people, right? I make it simple for myself. I fill this up every morning. I, I didn't fill it up today. I haven't had that much water today. And I finish that by the end of the day. Um, and so that's kind of my goal. So there's a goal for you all, hit that water. That can solve so many problems. You, sometimes when you're hungry, you think you're hungry, you're actually thirsty. Dehydration affects exercise, it affects sleep, it affects mental acuity, all that kind of stuff. And again, every one of these topics, what I'm doing with my corporate clients now, just FYI, good for you to know, Matt, is every one of these topics is a 30 minute talk that I do once a week for people. And I've been doing this for like a year with some people. So it's been really, really fun. Okay, we're gonna do a little math just so you guys have some numbers to walk away. If you're looking to lose weight, maintain weight, or gain muscle, okay, I'm gonna give you a number to start with. So super simple, take your body weight, divide it by 2.2, okay? So if you're 200 pounds, if you're 100 pounds, whatever, your, your little friend there, Taylor, I don't know if she, she could do this, right? So she's probably like 60 pounds or something. You got it, 62 yeah. pounds. <laughs> Can I pick it or what, man? I should be at the circus picking the weight. Um, so divide your weight by 2.2 and multiply that number by 25. This is a general number just general, okay? If anybody has any questions, you can jump in and talk. Um, and that's just your baseline calories for the day. So if you came up with 2,000, if you ate, and again, this is not perfect, it's better if I can measure your body fat, but if you came up with 2,000, if you wanted to lose a significant amount of weight, you would take 300 to 500 calories out of that and eat that amount. So it's obviously weight dependent, it doesn't take into account muscle, but that's a good number to start with. And that's a number you can plug into MyFitnessPal. It'll be really close to the number that MyFitnessPal, they use almost the same uh, formula. So it'll be really close to what's already in your app, okay? And then another number I want you to do is I want you to multiply that number by 0.3, okay? That's the amount of protein calories your goal should be. And I can guarantee if we have a call right now of 17 people, there's probably two that are hitting that. Almost everyone I work with is very low on protein. Protein, again, is a whole nother talk I do, but it is filling and helps build muscle versus just a fuel like carbohydrates. So it's the best macronutrient. You can't eat 100% of your calories from protein, too much on your kidneys, but it's a really, really good one to raise up. And I could talk to you on the call about how to do that. 
Okay, so that's the calories and we can convert that to grams to make it easier too if you need to. For most people, a general plan on MyFitnessPal, and again, they set this pretty close, would be 40% carbohydrate, 30% protein, 30% fat. The number that really changes for most people, I think MyFitnessPal has 20% for protein to start. That's really the one that helps a ton, okay? So if you do, again, if you do one thing today, if this is what you wanna work on, we'll talk about it at the end. If you're more specific, a more restrictive diet, um, low carb, Atkins, keto, vegan, I'm actually experimenting with the carnivore diet right now. We could talk about that a little bit. Um, I like to try these things before I recommend or, or coach clients on them, okay? It's been interesting. If you don't like meat, don't try the carnivore diet. I've had steak like nine times in the last eight days. So if you like steak, might be a good diet for you. Um, that's something to go into with, on a call. We can't talk about that today, it's too detailed, okay? And then the other thing you could do is uh, measure your body fat, not just your weight. There's great inexpensive scales out there. I've got a bunch on my website. That's the link for all the products that I'm gonna talk about in this talk. All it does is link you to Amazon. It just vets all the products so you don't have to go to Amazon and search through 100 scales. I've already picked the ones that are good and they're on my website. So if you guys want them, go through there. Then supplements. This is one of the number one questions I get from people especially during COVID, what can I take to improve my immunity? I've heard so many things on the news. My first answer is, best supplement is great food, right? So good supplements really can't make up for a terrible diet. You need to start with the basics of good, whole, non-processed food, and then add the supplements, okay? These are the ones that really work. Um, Athletic Greens is my favorite greens powder, and I, I recommend people take that instead of a multivitamin because it has everything a multivitamin has, but it's from vegetable and fruit sources. It's not synthetic, and so it absorbs a lot better, okay? Um, Omega-3s are super important all the time. Fish oils, okay, one to two grams a day. Everyone should be taking vitamin D, especially this time of year, okay? Uh, vitamin C, take up to 1,000 milligrams a day. We have all heard about zinc during COVID. Um, and then fiber is the other one. Um, you don't have, you can get it anywhere. The one I have is like the one that comes at Costco. So most people are very low in protein, very low in fiber. Okay. And so those are the two things. And by the way, those two go hand in hand with drinking more water. So they all link together, right? You're going to increase some of them. So really, really important to kind of go through those numbers. Okay. Um, and then um, get outdoors. Haven't had the greatest days to get outdoors, right? But when the weather gets better, um, one of the best things you can do, like vitamin D, natural vitamin D from the sun, uh, 15 minutes every day, direct sun, as little clothes as possible. So get in your backyard and get naked if you want to. It doesn't matter to me, right? Um, but And then facing the sun with your eyes with no sunglasses. So the sun come in and don't stare at the sun, obviously, we know that. But looking down while the sun is on the horizon, the best time to get it is when it first comes up. Uh, but most people are not going to have the time to do that. Although, how cool would that be if you could combine seeing the sun with your morning devotional or whatever you want to add from that, affirmations, prayer time, breathing, whatever, okay? And then we know, like, I could do another five hours on exercise um, just to hit it from a high level because I want to work on your homeworks. These are the important thing. Um, the high level of it, I talked about this last time, is strength training is number one. Most people lean towards cardio. It feels good, they know it burns calories, it's easy, they don't have to think about it, they can just go to the gym and get on the treadmill, they can do it at home, they can go for a walk, nothing wrong with it. But the thing that's missing from most people's programs is strength training, okay? So again, that's really global. I can give you something specific for you that will work and you could do it at home, you could do it at a gym, you can do it wherever, right? Like I send a lot of workouts. It's another thing I do for most of my corporate clients. They get a workout every Monday that they can do at home. And I've really geared those towards home because probably only 50%. I have a client that I just picked up in Pennsylvania and has offices in California um, and like none of them are going to their gyms. So they all had to do in-home workouts, okay? And then cardio, Really depends on what your goal is, okay? If you're looking to run the peach tree, we're gonna have a different cardio program than somebody who just wants to feel good. If you're looking to lose a significant amount of weight, ultimate goal is 200 minutes a week, which sounds like a lot, but that's 30 minutes a day. Cool research now, this was not years ago when I first started, is that um, you can accumulate it any, any way you like. You can do 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, 10 in the morning, 10 at lunch, 10 at night, an hour a day for three days a week, Whatever works best for your schedule, just accumulate time. 
weight training goals eight times a month, 30 to 45 minutes. So weight training, obviously, a lot less time. It's just a little more complicated and you're adding more. Again, on our calls, right? Am I selling these free calls or what, guys? Like I keep pushing you towards it, but I'm excited about that. Um, and I do these all day now, which is so much fun. We can give you a program. Like you can tell me, look, mommy, all I have is one band and a couple of three pound weights. What can I do? And I'll design a program around that for you. That's another gift that I want to give today. All right, time to do some homework, but we're not doing homework. We're doing it right now. Okay. So last time I started the talk, I start all talks with nothing, all this stuff. We just went through this in 30 minutes. Okay, guys, all this, none of it works unless you have a good why. And the why is the reason why you want to do any of this stuff, okay? Um, Gary Keller from Keller Williams coined this. I love it. If it doesn't make you cry, it's not a big enough why. It has to be emotional, okay? So the example I give, I'll tell the story really quickly. Um, had a client for years. He did great with me. I think I told the story last time, but it's worth hearing again. Uh, would come in to work out three times a week consistently when he wasn't traveling. He was a writer for Sports Illustrated, so he traveled all over the world. He ate a terrible diet. He loved cinnamon buns. He loved everything in the, in the airport, right? All those great smells. And always told me, I can't eat right and I can't exercise outside of our three workouts because I have no time. So fast forward, we're in a workout. He's warming up on the treadmill and starts to get chest pain. Uh, and he does this sign, by the way, this is the international sign for having a heart attack. If you ever see somebody do that and said, I feel pressure, I feel like I'm having an asthma attack, I feel a burning sensation. Those three things, right, are the three out of the four things that you need. To, if you hear that, they're going to the hospital. Okay, so I said, look, get off the treadmill, you're going to the doctor. His first answer is, I'm fine, it's just asthma, let's keep working out. The fourth thing is denial. Okay, so I kind of forced the issue. This was like 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. The next call I got was from his wife, one o'clock on Wednesday, that he was coming out of open heart surgery. So he went to the doctor to get checked and he was so blocked that they didn't even let him go home. Had a triple bypass the next morning. Okay, this is a really, you know, not happy story right now. Why is Rami telling it? Because fast forward six months later, he's gone through a recovery. He's lost 30 pounds. He's a full vegan. Okay, eats no cinnamon buns, works out six to seven times a week, sometimes twice a day. Guess what? Nothing changed. Has the same job, still travels. What changed? His why. So his was obviously powerful. And so that was his, and that's what we worked on. And he's still doing that. So that was his life changing moment, that pain, right? So what I gave you guys to help with this, okay, is a bunch of goal ideas. All right, we're not gonna go over all these, right? But I'm gonna fast forward so you guys can hear my why, so you can get an idea. Because like, let's just jump at one right here. Number 22, exercise without embarrassment. Great, that's a great goal. I don't know the why yet when you say that. You could say, when I was a kid in gym class, I was bullied incessantly and I never want that to happen again. And if that still evokes emotion in you, it's a why. If it doesn't, if you're over it, it's not a why. It's not gonna work. So it has to have an emotion. So going forward to the very end, number 37 is mine. So mine is, I want, to be, I want my children to be proud of me. Okay, that's my goal. Why is that? For me, I remember what it looked like when my parents did something that I was proud of, but even more importantly, I remember when they did things that I wasn't proud of and how powerful that was. Now, I don't know if you heard it, and I'm not faking it, but every time I say that, I get choked up. And I've probably said it a thousand times. Because that's what I've found. And it, that one is so good for me because it permeates everything, right? It's how I run my business, how I treat my, my wife, how I treat my kids, how I treat my friends, how I work out, how I eat, how I drink. Water. All of that is, goes back to that. And trust me, kids don't always see it, right? But I know what it is. So that's so powerful for me. And by the way, I've talked about this before. That wasn't my why 30 years ago. Very different. My why was about competing or how I looked or whatever. So. That gives you an example. Your homework, it's simple, you might already have it, is if you want to go down this exercise, I want you to text me your why. It's private, it'll stay between us, and we can work on that in your call. Because again, guys, without that, nothing moves forward. Nothing at all, all right? So that one's a little longer. You're not gonna figure that out now. It typically takes for me, somebody will say, um, 
you know, they'll, I'll say, what's your why? And they'll say, I want to lose weight. And that's great. That's a goal. And I'll say, well, why do you want to lose weight? Well, because my doctor told me I should. Well, why did your doctor tell you you should? Well, because he thinks I'm pre-diabetic. Well, why does that resonate with you? Because a lot of people in this country, like 50% of this country is pre-diabetic. Well, my mom was diabetic and she had to have her foot amputated. And it was the worst experience of my life. Boom, we've just found the why. That could take me 20 minutes in a call. Some people get it right away. Some people takes like six months of working with them. Now they've got a why and they're working and they're doing good, but the why isn't powerful enough. We get there and then that can work for six months and then it changes. So anyway, that one takes a little longer. If you want to do it, let's do it together. Okay. Then in addition to that, you need inspirations. Your why is great, but you need daily things that are going to inspire you. Right. And so I'm going to do a little exercise here. It's 1207. I promise to be done at 1215 for discussion. So this won't take long. I'm going to give you guys two minutes. Um, I'm going to share with you what inspires me. I love this statement, by the way, to obtain what we've never had, we must do what we've never done. How true is that, right? So super important to do that. So I want you guys to think of things that inspire you. Let's just do one and then you can do five later. So let me give you mine. I love inspirational stories, books. I love YouTubes of people doing impossible things. I'm very inspired by really inspirational Christian music. I listen to that when I'm doing long runs. Um, probably one of my biggest ones is if you tell me I can't do something or that's impossible, I'm doing it, right? So, so if you want me to do something that, I love being a role model. My results now are really more about me comparing myself to me versus somebody else. And then most importantly, compliments from Scott. I mean, that's really my number one inspiration, right? If Scott compliments me, my whole day is there. So anyway, let's take one minute and you guys write down something that inspires you. And then I'll just open it up if anybody's willing to share. Okay, so I'm gonna take one minute while I have a little more coffee. I see people writing. All right, is anybody willing to share something that inspires them? I'll start. Okay. If anyone wants to, I just, for me, uh, when Rami and I used to talk about this stuff, we realized that one of the things that I needed was a goal. <laughs> I had to have something out there to work towards. And uh, so I was thinking about why does that matter to me? And I think it's because what inspires me, one of the things is seeing progress, seeing a difference. I have to kind of see that what I'm doing, all the discipline and effort and sacrifice and everything else is actually making a difference and paying off. So if I, so if I measure body fat or, you know, whatever it is, I, seeing that that is getting better is what motivates me. That's awesome. I love that. And that can be different things. Thanks for sharing, Scott. That, that can be different things. It can be not just aesthetic. It can just be you know, just seeing a difference in my mood, right? Like I know when I started sleeping better, my mood was so much more consistent during the day. So there's an inspiration, right? Anybody else? I got one. Okay. Right there. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see yeah. her hair. Like, yeah. I say my, my family, um, especially Zoe, um, just kids wanting to be there for them. That inspires me. I love it. And that's powerful. So that's not just an inspiration. That's a goal and also a why, right? So that, that has all, all three together. That's awesome. Let's do one more. I'll go. Okay. Uh, Robbie, I, <clears throat> one of the things that probably gets inspires me the most is to see growth in people. If I see somebody conquering a fear or moving further or starting to reach their potential, it just, it, it amplifies me in such a most, such a powerful way. Man, I love that. And it's funny, like I get inspired by my clients all the time. So we did a thing the other day on recovery techniques. And um, one of them is uh, uh, cold showers. So you've heard a lot about this in the news and people talk about it and, you know, Navy SEALs talk about it. And I've tried it and, uh, you know, I don't mind the cold, but there's something about that. I just really enjoy a warm shower. But I had a client on one of my calls who called me out and said, come on, let's do it. So I set the goal. 
um, and I'm going to start next week. <laughs> yeah. So I'm being realistic, right? Because I'm doing this crazy diet, and one of the interesting things is I'm cold all the time because my calories are so low. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be accountable to all of you that I'm going to start, but I'm going to start the wimpy way, which is take a warm shower, and then at the end, just turn it a little bit colder. Okay. So instead of just jumping, I don't know how people do that. Like I do it at the pool, but jumping into a cold shower. Awesome guys. So that's great. I want you guys to work on that. I want you to work on your why. And then my final homework before I open it up to discussion is I want you, okay, to, from all this talk, so we've been going about 40 minutes. I've said probably a hundred things. Um, something resonated, if not more than one thing. I want you to pick a goal for the next 30 days. Okay. And knowing that we're going to do a call, we're going to be accountable. You can text me. My number's in here. Texting is the best or email, by the way. Don't ever try to call me. I'll, I'll never pick up the phone. I'm always on calls. So I want you to pick one thing and we've got a little bit of time. So I actually want you to write it down. And all of you have, have something already based on this talk, whether it's drinking more water, go to bed at a different time, starting the day with a devotional, getting sunlight, naked, like I said, I love that, that that's just going to keep coming out. So, but really something, let's take 60 seconds or even just 30, write down a goal, and then we're going to see if anybody wants to share. 30 seconds. All right, I want somebody new. Okay, I don't want to pick on just Matt and Taylor and Scott. Um, somebody new, give me a goal. Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. <laughs> no problem. Who is this? Um, I can't see faces. Christina. Hey, Christina. So I'm, I'm, new, I'm new as of December. So. All right. Um, I'm, I, I wake up and do kind of a, a journal entry in the gratitude thing every morning. So I, I take that time. What I don't do is just sit and be with yeah. me so that yeah minute long breathing thing. Um, I'm not sure I can get much past that because my mind's just constantly going. Yeah. But I would like just to sit, even, even not think about the gratitude or the journaling, just to sit and be just with me. That's such a great goal. And let me share with you, I am the worst meditator on earth. I have tried it for my whole life and I'm so, you can tell, I have a fair amount of energy. Like I cannot sit for 30 minutes and do nothing. It's just, my friends are all challenging me to go to a silent retreat. They're like, you would blow up, right? <laughs> like it's yeah. for eight hours. So this breathing technique, so perfect for me because it's 60 seconds. Anybody could do that, right? right? So I love it. Let's add that to your repertoire. So thank you for sharing the goal. And now you're accountable. So people are going to ask you about it. Okay. Who else wants to share? Come on, guys. One more. It could just be drinking water. <laughs> hey, Rami. It's Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, I'm going to get up at 530 every morning this month. I like it. You're going to give yourself a range or you're just going to shoot for 530? No, 530. I love it. I love it. Starting tomorrow? Starting tomorrow. What are you going to use to wake yourself up? Not your phone, right? <laughs> that's yeah, too much <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah so just fyi that's a great one thank you matt um i love it and it'll change your going to bedtime trust me um just real quick on that alarm clock thing my wife i had the worst alarm clock it was one of those ones that were just was so loud and so annoying so she bought one of these mac daddy alarms um, it's so cool it it basically eases you into waking up so it like like say i want to be up at six mm -hmm. right i set it at 550 at 5.50, it starts with a really light, really low light, and then whatever you want, like I have birds chirping, it can be water, you know, it's just something really calm, really low. Like, like right now, we probably wouldn't hear it, but you know how your hearing gets better when you're mm -hmm. sleeping, right? So it, and it, as the 10 minutes goes, it eases you awake, and then if you make it 10 minutes without hitting off, that's when your alarm goes. I've had it since Christmas of 19, I've never made it to my alarm. <laughs> Because it's yeah. such, yeah, and it's, oh, it, well, first of all, it's great for my wife who does not get up at six in the morning, right? Right. She's not being jolted awake. Um, <laughs> the only problem with it is it's so complicated that when I go on vacation, she doesn't know how to turn the thing off, right? So she's like, <laughs> it's going off again. I don't know what to do. But anyway, I can't remember where she got it. But if anybody wants that, I'll, I'll find out from her and I'll text it to you. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop the share for now. And, um, Taylor, I can't see. Is there anything in the chat room? Rami, did you say the alarm has a light on it as well? 
Yeah, so who is that? Who just talked? Charlene. Oh, Charlene, hey, how are you? Yeah, so it's a light that starts really low and you pick the color um, and then it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. It's really, really fascinating. Brighter and brighter and brighter as the 10 minutes goes. Um, and I'm just writing down alarm because I need to find out where she got that. Um, chances are, I'm gonna just say it was on Amazon, crazy, right? Um, but yeah, it's great. And then it's got things where you can set, you know, music and, and then I have it set at 10 minutes to go to the radio uh, instead of that, rant, 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 you know, that kind of thing. Okay. So it's like 12, 16. Okay. It's been about 45 minutes. Let's open it up for discussion. Again, if there's anything in the chat room, I can't see it. Um, it's empty. That, it's empty. Okay. So let's just open it up. Um, like I said, sometimes fasting is a good one to talk about. We've got time. So what do you guys want me to dive into deeper? Will you talk about uh, protein bars for a second? Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's great. I just got off a call with somebody who need like literally my goal for her is 100 grams of protein a day and she's eating 25. So there's a big leap there, right? Um, so in general, any type of supplement, protein bar, protein shake, whatever, you want to look for the protein and the carbohydrate content. You want the protein higher than the carbs. So for instance, the slim fast protein bar is basically a, a candy bar with three grams of or five grams of added protein. Not a good choice. It's got like 40 grams of sugar. Okay. So the best ones I like are the quest and the one, like the number one. Those are fantastic. You can get them at Publix, you can get them anywhere, you can get them on Amazon. Um, the couple of things they have, they have higher protein than carbs. Okay. So they have low carbs and then they have, um, they have uh, fiber added, which is great. Most people are getting low fiber. Scott, you and I have talked about this. The Quest Bar has 14 grams of fiber, and my goal for people is 30 grams a day. So half your fiber in one bar. That being said, you will be going to the bathroom more regularly when you eat those and drink a lot of water because it's, and they have about 20 grams of protein. So, so try those. I always recommend to people, go to Publix, buy a few flavors, like with the Quest, the flavors have different textures. It's really weird. Like the blueberry is dry, but the chocolate chip is like soft, like a chocolate chip cookie. I don't know why. I guess the way they make them. So I just try all the flavors till I find one I like, and then I eat that till I'm sick of it, and then I try a new one. The one bars are delicious. They're not as good nutritionally as the Quest. Makes sense, right? So the Quest is the best, and the Quest is the best. I really should work for the company, um, but that's a really good thing to add. And just so you know, those are really, there's not that many. Um, the pure protein is another good one. Um, but really in general, if you have a choice, get a ready to made shake, not a bar. The shakes are always better nutritionally. They're just a little harder to deal with. The shakes are always gonna have less carbohydrates, always gonna have less sugar, and they actually add fiber to them now, which is great. Does that answer your question, Scott? Yeah, I would, the only thing I would add is that, um... I was complaining about how expensive the Quest bars were because I'm cheap. Yep. And you, and you pointed me to Costco and Costco has a one that's very similar to the Quest bar. It's like yep. their version. You get a whole box of them. So that's what I've been doing. Instead. Yeah. Yeah. And it's look, they're not as good. The protein powder is not, not, is not as good, but I would rather you do that than not do it. Right. So that's my point on that. Yeah. Those Kirkland bars. That's why I do the Kirkland fiber. All fiber is the same. So that's the brand I recommend. So. Yeah, they're definitely not. But I like to tell people when they say expensive, first of all, I say, how, how valuable is your health? And then secondly, think of it as a meal, not as a supplement. And as a meal, $2 or $2.50 is nothing. Okay. We still, Taylor, do we still stock those, the Quest bars in the yeah. office? I was going to yeah. say, you had them last time. We just had some. Well, we had some recently. Um, I don't yeah, know. they go quickly. But yeah. yes, thanks to your referral, we've been stocking those in. They go yeah, they're, not, they're really not bad. Look, I've been in this industry long enough when bars and shakes were terrible. I couldn't get anybody to drink them. It was like cardboard and, you know, drinking like the worst powdery, grittery stu gritty stuff. So really good. Um, somebody put something in the chat room, but I can't see it. What does it say? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was from Matt. Um, he said, what are your thoughts on melatonin supplements at night? Um, I found they help me go to sleep, but not often stay asleep. Yeah, that's exactly what I would answer. So the other thing about melatonin for me personally is it gives me the weirdest dreams. So if I take enough of it to knock me out, um, I sleep. I usually wake up around two when it wears off, which is not good. 
Um, and so, and my dreams are, I, I can't even take it. Like they're not, they're not fun. You know what I mean? Those dreams you wake up with a whole day, you're like anxiety ridden from your dream. And I've heard that from a fair amount of people. Some people love it. They take it on plane rides. It's great for a plane ride because it lasts about three hours. Um, like if you want to knock yourself out on the way to Europe. I have been experimenting with a really high quality CBD. Um, we're in Georgia, so there's no THC, guys. Sorry, it's not fun, you know, like getting the real marijuana. But I love it, and it also helps recovery. Um, so I've been taking one or two of those at night. They help me fall asleep and relax and stay asleep. I don't really – It's for me, it's getting to sleep when my mind is racing. It's not – once I'm asleep, I'm great, right? Mm -hmm. But for me – and other people, they go to sleep great, and then they wake up at 2 in the morning. So – Either of those, the CBD, and I can recommend the company. They're a fantastic company. Be really careful with CBD. <laughs> Don't buy it at Quick Trip. Um, the, the stuff that's out there on the market, about 80% of it is really junk because there's no FDA on it yet. And so you can be getting virtually no CBD in there and not sourced well. But I've been really happy with that. And um, things like uh, if you go to the health food store, lavender helps. Uh, uh, there's roots that can help. Um, chicory helps. There's a few things that do help. Um, but don't, you know, whatever you can do, usually the number one thing I help people with is getting rid of the phone and not checking their emails and their texts and their, and their, their stuff right before they go to bed. That elevates you not just from the screen, but from what's in it. Make sense? Okay, okay cool. Other questions? Or discussions. Rami, I have a question. Sure. Um, so I know that in studies on animals, there are proven short-term effects of fasting as far as being conducive to health, but yep. the long-term effects are somewhat more variable and less studied. Yep. So I, any insight into that would be great. And then number two, um, how long does it take for your body to actually enter the you know the state of ketogenesis? Yep. Yeah, in, in regards to intermittent fasting, if you had yeah, great, insight. great question. Again, this will be a great one for a call, Max. So, like, let's go dive in. So, there's studies. You know, the cool thing about fasting is it's actually been around for about five thousand years, right? Because religions have used it, and actually, physicians before they had medicine, it was their number one go-to. They would just fast people out of their disease states. Um, so, there is a lot of human research on it. Um, the the power of it is great. The power of fasting starts at about 12 to 14 hours. So like really, I kind of push people to that 12 to 14 hour of not eating window. And I've also seen a lot of, there's a ton of stuff coming out now on what they call fasting mimicking, where they're like, oh, you can have bone broth or you can buy our products and you'll still get fasting. I'm not a big believer in that yet. I believe as close to water only as you can get is going to be the best results. So 16 hours is kind of the sweet spot that I try to get people to fast for 16, eat in an eight hour window. Um, real amazing stuff happens in long term fasting and I can walk people through that. But you'll get into ketosis really depends on what you're eating before you fast. So if you're a 70 percent carbohydrate guy, you have a big old pizza and some ice cream on Sunday. You could fast for two days and you won't get into ketosis because it'll take that long to burn through all that glucose, right? But for me, I eat a low carbohydrate, high fat diet. I get into ketosis in like six hours. I'm pretty much in it all the time. And then when I fast, when I do an extended fast, um, I get into such a high level of ketosis, I actually have to stop because my energy gets too high. Imagine that, right? You think fasting, you'd be so tired, but it's the opposite because ketones are so good. So sorry, Max, I know that was a quick answer, but you know. No, no problem. Thank you. Very insightful. Yeah. Okay, cool. Something else in the chat room? Or is that the old one? Just lighten up. That's the old one. Okay, cool. All right, we got six minutes. One more question. Rami, what are your thoughts on the Ar those Arden Gardens, like gallon juice fast? My wife has been wanting to do that. And I'm like, yeah, oh. this is. This is a great, you'll love this answer, Matt. So I'm driving to school with my daughter. You know how you, you know how you don't think your kids hear anything you say, right? And then every once in a while they repeat something back. You're like, oh my gosh, they were listening. So she goes, dad, somebody the other day asked me about juice fasting. And I said, look, my dad does this for a living. And he said, if you're going to fast, just fast with water. So think about it this way, Matt. Every time you drink, what is juice? It's sugar. It's carbohydrate. So when you drink a juice, yeah, you're not having solid food. So you're giving your body a little bit of a break but you're instantly raising your blood sugar level and your insulin, which is the whole wonderful thing that happens in fasting that you're not getting. 
So I am not a believer in juice fasts. I'm like, I'd rather coach somebody through a 16 hour water. And by the way, remember you can have black coffee or plain tea, right? During that time, caffeine actually helps the fasting, um, then do a juice fast. I'm not a fan, don't like them. Um, I've seen people have just really terrible results. Like they don't feel good. You know, they feel nauseous and all that's because they're doing this with their sugar. One of the coolest things about fasting and eating less carbohydrate is your energy levels are steady. If I had a glass of orange juice right now, I would jump through the roof because I've been fasting. Like I haven't had my first meal yet. And then at, at about an hour, I'd be passed out on my desk because my levels would go way down. So don't like them at all. Arden's Gardens, they've got a couple that have protein added that are not bad for a meal. Uh, I think they have two of them, two or three of them. They're First of all, they're delicious. I've had them, right? But I've had them post like a three hour run to get in some sugar, but not as a meal. All right, guys, did we get something out of this? It's 1226. Yeah, good stuff. Very good. I love it. Okay, I will expect to see on my online calendar some calls popping up after this. So I will send you the links, Taylor. I'm gonna add a couple of things, notes I took, and if you can forward it to everybody, and then we'll have this recorded hopefully send out to your old team. Yep. I appreciate it, man. And I would love to do this in some form ongoing with you guys, even if it's, let's not do it once every COVID. Okay, can we agree to that? So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, but it's great. But I do these all week now. They're super fun. And, you know, and I was laughing with my wife. I'm like, oh, I've got another lunch and learn today. What should I wear? She's like, the same thing you wear all day. Like, what difference does it make? You know, <laughs> any other quick questions before we finish up? Great. Awesome, guys. So appreciate your time. Have a blessed day, okay? Thanks, Rami. Thanks, Rami. Thanks, Rami. Appreciate it. Yeah.